H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, global syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Not there, so I have to execute this command first. Okay, now I got the group by output and then let me describe the group by output. So here you are giving the definition of your actual output values. So it is the combination of group comma tuple collections and your tuples are having the values of carare, carare and int. So that is what describe defines. So it will give you the uh, formats of your output alias that was generated. So all clear? Okay. So I am not going to run this but I will show you how it looked like. Okay. For example, I have a alias such as count var. So, just uh, imagine that you have you got an alias like count var. And now, the illustrate command will show you all the collections. So, it is giving you the logical collection, whatever we had seen in the describe command. Along with that, it is giving you the physical collection as well in your output. So, this is the physical collection, right? So here is your output and here is your logical collection. If you give illustrate, it would give you the both the combinations. So the logical as well as the physical collections. So that is what your diagnostic operators. So it will let you know like how you are working on it and what are your outputs and it will give some explanation of your outputs. And the next one is built-in functions. So till now we had seen all the transformations that were available. But along with that, directly we can apply few functions on whatever the input files that we have. So if at all I want to get uh, a maximum age of an employee in a table, then I, have, I don't need to write a big script for getting that maximum value. I can use a built-in function called as max which can give the desired output for me. So in that kind I have few other built-in functions as well. So using this it is like it will reduce my code to get my desired output. So some sample functions are average, concat, count, difference. So average is nothing but it will give you the average of all the values and concatenation is like it will concatenate one or more strings that were available and count is like the normal counts whatever we had seen till now 
and difference is like suppose I have two tuples and I want to get the difference in each of the column that were available on the tuple so if I give a difference command on those both the tuples it will give you the difference between each of the matching key of both of them so in that way I had again maximum minimum sum tokenize so tokenize is one of the important built-in function I will I will explain you in the next slide so but now just remember like just uh, tokenize is also an built-in function that was available and the next one is execution optimization okay so yesterday Rahul has asked me a question like uh, is there any way that I can reduce the commands that were showing you the execution of MapReduce or something so um, someone has ping me okay I told that there is no way that I can reduce those commands but keeping that aside I can at least reduce the time that was taking for my execution so if at all I can uh, rearrange, rearrange my whole pick scripts I can reduce the time for that execution but there is no way that I can come out of that I mean displaying those execution steps but I can just try or I can do my best to optimize the time that was taken for my execution so for that my pick compiler has some capabilities so let's see that the pick compiler can reorder the execution sequence to optimize performance so for example if I say like um, the same use case whatever we had seen for ex uh, encryption of healthcare center there I would be giving an example as example okay Script is equal to for each maybe some alias generate id comma encrypt some ssn values or something like that and then iq filter Than 30 and then some group commands like filter emp by age something something some other commands okay etc here what I am doing is for each input alias I am generating id comma encrypt of ssn so encrypt is not a simple function and definitely the encrypt function will be take some good amount of time for execution so if you imagine that my input file is very huge and the first statement that I'm executing is encryption of all whole of your file and after the encryption I am filtering only few values by giving a condition such as age greater than 30 I would be dropping so many values from my input file right even after the encryption I would be dropping most of my values so at that moment it's not the right way to write the script in this format right so it would be much better if you if I can execute this step as first step and then this step as second step rather than having this one as a first step and this statement as my second step right so even though I write my script in this way my pick compiler has the capability to run this command first and then later on this command first and this advantage can be taken only if I write it uh, the whole pick script in one single file rather than I use the step by step execution if I write my whole script in a single file and I write it as a I mean I run it as a single step then only my pick compiler can they take this advantage okay so if at all I write the whole script in one file and I save it and 
save it as a file as encrypt.peak and I run this whole one as run encrypt.peak then my execution will start from filter1 is equal to filter encrypt by age greater than 30 and then only it will start executing for each command so my pick compiler has that capability and that's what the execution optimization talks about okay for example imagine a program that applies an expensive so you can go through the slide so the functionality is nothing but the same okay so any questions on this optimization technique so let's see our the most important and the most highlighted program in our program which is the word count is there a setting for this no Rahul it is an inbuilt setting we don't need to do anything for this whenever you install the pig has that capability okay so here I am writing a word count program again which will generate the number of words as well as the count of each of the word so the same thing we did it in our MapReduce program as well right so if you remember there I had written a mapper which will emit count I mean word comma one through my mapper and my driver will call all the input formats and output formats again my mapper class out drive I mean reducer class blah 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 right so in my reducer I would take all the keys collected somewhere using my internal inbuilt shuffle and sort processes and I would give the output as word comma values but here if you see the word count program I just had seven to eight lines rather than writing some hundred lines of MapReduce program so that's what the beauty of pick is so let's start understanding the word count program okay so here I am loading my input file so whatever the file I want to count or give a word count functionality or it will loading it into my pick system as load input some bible or dot text something as line of care array as it is an text file I would be declaring the schema as line of care array because it is just a collection of words and I am keeping it in the form of arrays so everything I am storing it in the form of input underscore lines alias okay so this line will extract words from each line and put them into a big bag the data type okay let it be so if at all you have an input file and you don't know the schema of it as well maybe it can be in any other format as well at the time you can just skip this as command as well so it is not a mandatory step this is a optional step if at all you know the schema well and good you can go ahead and give if that's not the case no issues I can just give it as input underscore lines is equal to load of your text file that's it and then my second command is for each input underscore lines generate a flatten of tokenized line as words so my tokenize will do it will take each of line and divide it into words so suppose I have a line is this is the first program in pick so if I queue like this my output would be as this is
also my tokenize will create a bag of individual words so if I have two lines like this I would be for the first line I would be generating like this and for the second line I would be generating again as single tuples right so let's will be a single bag as will be a single collection of bag try a single collection of bag to understand it and so on so forth so after that I get the output if I apply a flatten on these two it would combine just these two values and finally I would be getting as and so on let's us try to and so on so all this will be collected into a single alias if at all I give flatten of tokenize so tokenize will distribute each of the tuple into separate tuples and flatten will combine all these two tuples I mean all the single tuples so that's what the functionality of flatten and tokenize and what I am doing is I am writing all the flattenized tuples into words and then I am grouping it now it would be like group filtered underscore words by word and I am storing it into word of groups so for each word I will be grouping it so for example uh, it uh, is not, it is not understand. in this program for example if I have in this way in is available here as well as here then you would be getting the output as in comma in this way you would be getting it Shit. so this will be your output after your group by in this way if at all if the word is not repeated no issue suppose if you take let's it will be like in this form only that's it so it will just collect all your keys and then after the group is happening I am just doing a count of your output values so for each word groups generate count of filtered words as count comma group so after this command executes I would be getting it as in 3 in comma 3 let's comma one and then this comma two sorry so so on it you would be getting it after this command executes and then order word counts order word counts by count descending or ascending so it's up to me if I want to order it or not so if I order it in some way maybe in ascending or descending order I would be getting it output in that way so here the order command is not a mandatory command as well for me so once I want to get a clean and good lookable output I would be giving an order command here and finally I would be storing this final alias ordered underscore word underscore count into a output file so for that I would be using the store command so instead of dump I am using store to store it in a separate file so that's what if you see here I totally had one two three four five six seven commands only seven statements that one and in that one is optional if I take ordered as a optional totally I had only six commands to do a word count in pig so now you can compare that how much map reduce is becoming difficult for developers or for those people who are trying to 
learn how to so that's the reason all these ecosystems came into picture and such that all data analysts or business analysts whoever are not aware of development parts even they can work on Hadoop so can we go ahead fine the next one is the last concept called as UDFs which is user defined functions so I just wanted to introduce this as well even though it's not part of our course content so it would be useful for you if you just know what it is about at least okay so PIC is highly extendable using user defined functions so user defined functions are nothing like I will write a program and I can use this program somewhere else also rather than at this point of time writing a function and leaving it apart I can use the same functionality in some other scripts as well so that my program will be much more lesser if at all I use this user defined functions so for example I have to format a particular time into some other format if I have this user defined function declared somewhere I can use the same function in my another pick script also suppose I have hundred scripts of different functionalities and in somewhere or other I had to use this time format conversion so instead of writing all the functionality in all the hundred scripts I can just call this function in my pick script such that it can be it can reduce the time of the developer as well as the number of statements for writing our PIC program so for this PIC provides a well-defined set of APIs for writing these UDFs so this doesn't mean that you will have to write all the functions you need yourself so that's what every time you don't need to write yourself even you had some built-in functions as well but if at all you want to write some UDFs you can write it as well okay picky bank is one of a repository where can where you can store or these user defined functions like a common storage so if at all some other guy in who worked on Hadoop has written some user defined function so what he do is he will directly store it in piggy bank such that even if at all I start learning pig now I can use those user defined functions and I can test my programs easily so it's like a common share or common repository so first of all if I if you want to write some new functionality directly go on, don't go ahead and try to write a user defined function rather than first try to check it in your piggy bank and if you don't find any appropriate function to satisfy your requirement then only try to go ahead and write a user defined function or else directly use that function at all such that it will be useful for you so all your picky banks or all your UDFs will be available at this site so you can go and have a look on this such that you will be knowing what are the uh, available user defined functions so it is like a kind of repository which will be updated day by day or maybe minute by minute as well so you can check it very well before you write your programs so again the major back I mean you know back fork in UDFs is UDFs are written in Java and packaged as jar before you use them in your pick script so if at all you want to write a UDF first of all go to Eclipse write your UDF and create a jar file for that and once a jar is created and if you want to use that jar in your pig shell then first of all you have to register your jar in your pig shell so to use a UDF you must first register the jar file with pig using the register statement so suppose if I create a jar as pig of examples dot jar then in my current shell first of all I would be giving the command register pig examples dot jar so that it will understand or it will unpack your jar in your grunt shell afterwards you can invoke the UDF by its fully qualified Java class name so there 
writing your UDFs means first of all you have to include a uh, package which is called as maybe com.hadoobook.pick or whatever packages for writing your UDF and then followed by the class name. So here com.hadoobook.pick is your package name and is good quality is your class name. So you have to call it in this way. So for example if I have a script called as filtered underscore records is equal to filter records by some temperature or some other condition and then you have to give your com.hadoobook.pick for example if you want to check some functionality on your temperature. So this is how it call. In my next slide I will show you how it actually works also. So also if you need to use a function multiple times uh, it is much more difficult for you to write all the package name and then the class name and then calling your function. So rather than writing whole that big text I can just define it also by giving a new name for all of your functionality. So once you write your register command I can define it as for the whole com dot book book how do book dot pick dot is good quality I can give it a name as is good. So from the next time onwards I can just call this function as the same script is repeated and at the at the end I am just giving it as is good instead of com dot how do book dot pick dot is good quality. So I am just defining names for my function as well. So I can just give a small name such that it will be much more user friendly at the time of writing the programs. So this is how a actual UDF looks like. So for example if your script is like filter records is equal to filter records by temperature not equal to 99 and you have a com uh, condition like I want to fetch the records only for quality is equal to 0, 1, 4, 5 and 9. So instead of writing the whole line like the second statement which you are seeing here like this way I can just call it as filter records is equal to filter records by temperature not equal to 999 and the function is good of quality. So whenever I write or I execute this particular step it will internally call this UDF or the JavaScript. So your jar file will be unpacked in this form in your big grunt. So if you see the same functionality even I am writing it in a Java program. So if you see here I am just checking for a null values or if your tuple size is 0 and if that's the case I am throwing an error and if that is not the case I am checking or I am retrieving all the values where my quantity is not is equal to 0 or 1 or 4 or 5 and 9. So here whatever I had given it is a small function. It might be a very huge function as well. So at that time I can write a UDF in this way and I can skip all the whole step in my big script actually by writing a one single step like filter records is equal to filter records by temperature and calling my function name. So this UDF will be stored in your piggy bank. So if at all I want to use this only function then instead of writing all these things I can just call it as filtered records is equal to filter records by temperature and call this just function. That is enough for you. So that's what UDF is about. Any questions on this? So whenever you are trying to write huge scripts at that moment UDFs will be useful for you. Okay. Can we go ahead? Hopefully this is the end of your big session. Right. So with this we had finished our pick. I would be sharing you the uh, document whatever you had seen all the commands that I had executed so that you can try it at your home and maybe you can try a simple UDF also. Okay. So fine. So just we will try to introduce Hive as well today. 
so i think we have half an hour more time or maybe at least for 10 to 15 minutes i will try try to give you a sample introduction of hive so that i can directly jump into hive session in our next class is that fine guys can i go ahead can i get a quick nod from everyone okay good so in the whole ecosystems if you take pig is the a smaller ecosystem or the number of concepts that needs to be discussed on pig or at least less when you compare with hive or maybe mapreduce hdfs or whatever okay so it's much more easier and people who are trying to jump into hadoop career for you pig would be a right place to start working on so let me come out of this so now let's see some differences hive so pick and hive are much more similar and both are used for the same functionality using pick i will try to do some or i will try to extract some information and even using hive i will do the same functionality so both are delete much more of same kind which are which is used for extraction of some data from my huge of big data okay so but then what is making a difference between pig and hive so what is the need of introducing a hive as a new ecosystem if at all both have the same functionality and pig is already available so what's the reason of having hive so let's try to understand that pig is like much more plsql kind of function whereas my hive is like hadoop okay so is anyone i mean does anyone heard about plsql uh, you have at least you have a little bit idea about plsql anyone at least anyone heard about it okay fine no issues okay so you don't need to understand plsql or anything like that i'm just trying to differentiate between pick and hive and that's the reason i had given like plsql or sql so or else okay let me explain you in much more granulated way so that you can understand so let's take an example okay i have an requirement like get me count of all the bmws in new york so if this is my requirement i would go and use it use hive to get this information okay so it is like much more a straight forward question which was given to me and i can directly use hive to fetch this kind of information and if at all i get a case like tell me in the last twenty years how many have luxury vehicles one second 
luxury vehicles enter into the city and in that how many choose to have BMW and how many choose to have Audi also can you please tell me how many were there in 2012 with new models so if at all i had given a question in this way like okay tell me how many uh, how many people are having audi cars and how many people are having maybe bmw and what are the new models that were ever arrived in 2012 give me all that collection of all the cities in us if i say a question like this i would prefer pick to fetch this kind of information so it's not like a straightforward question where i can directly give some command and a simple command and fetch that information so i need to do some analysis and it needs a step by step execution which granulates the information what i want at the end so it's like a so it is much like a multi step language but hive is like a straight forward retrieval data so that's what the difference between i mean the basic difference between pick and hive okay so in hive i would be having commands as maybe select star from students so if anyone is ever aware of sql i would be having much more similar commands like this only right so it is like select star from students or select some employee id from employee table comma order table by doing some joining so the same functionalities and the same functions i can use on my hive as well so that's what my uh hive talks about and that is what the advantage of hive when you compare with your map reduce or your pick and one more thing is like even hive statements will also be converted to map reduce because my hadoop cluster can understand only map reduce so that's the reason even though i write a select star from students command in my hive internally it will be converted into a map reduce program okay the reason why we introduced pick and hive is most of the people will not be able to understand java and that's the reason they had introduced these two ecosystems as well but now as i'm telling like hype is like sql on hadoop tell me one answer for this question okay mm how do i write a sql command and execute it if at all my hadoop is dealing with mm, a distributed file system right you told me initially that hadoop is having a distributed file system but not it is not a kind of tables or anything and how come now you are telling that you can write a direct sql command and you can feel like you are giving a command on a table and retrieving the information so how is that possible 
right did anyone at least uh, got this question in your mind or maybe let me put it in this way when data moves from maybe some mysql or oracle or maybe other thing also to hdfs which folder in hdfs the data is going to be stored i am saying that using scoop or something i would be retrieving all the data from my traditional databases and i would be loading it into my hdfs right so where this data should be stored so is it going to be stored on the same whole cluster it is it going to be divided on the whole cluster so just think of this question and try to give or just try to reach out what happens internally okay so basically hive was introduced by facebook whereas it is developed by by yahoo so that is one of the point so let me stop you for uh, stop this class for today and i hope that everyone will think about this question okay is that fine so shall we find up for the day but no worries i will be explaining you all the entire things on hadoop in the next session today i just wanted to give you a, a basic idea or basic introduction of hive and just a bit differentiation between pig and hive okay so fine guys thank you for joining let's meet in our next class and we will discuss much more about hive okay have a happy weekend and good night uh again monday night so if at all it's night yeah right monday night okay bye Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.